Hello, this is Mark Wildman of Wildman Athletica, and today we are going to talk about the HydroCore front-loaded shin box switch. The HydroCore is a piece of equipment that everybody should have in their training arsenal. It is something that you can deflate, take all the water out of it and travel with, which makes it eminently useful. It is easier to travel with than things like kettlebells, clubs, dumbbells, barbells, or sandbags. You can throw it in your bag with you, deflated, you're in the four to five pound range, and you can take it on a carry-on and you can travel. It is one of the few pieces of equipment that allows you to continue doing your basic human movement training, your rotation under load and your get-ups as you are traveling through the modern world. The shin box is a basic human movement position that we have lost in the modern world because we sit in chairs all the time. Sitting in chairs all the time causes our hips to not work very well, our hamstrings to not work very well, and that leads people to a general level of discomfort and pain in their hip, in their lower back because it's just not moving the way that it should. The shin box is meant to help people restore that primary human action. Most important part, the distance between our feet should be squat width apart. That should be the distance between our knee and our ankle. When we get down into our shin box position, our knee will line up with the instep of the back leg. We're calling this leg the back leg, we're calling this one the lead leg. That can be a little bit confusing. Some people will call it opposite of that. Transition towards the center. Try and put your feet flat on the ground. Lift your chest up towards the sky. Transition. Your spine will probably do a bunch of weird stuff during the transition. That's fine in the beginning. It gets better over time. Knee comes to the instep of the opposite leg. We're gonna call that our lead leg and we're gonna try and sit our lead hip down into the ground. Practice all of this without weight first. Transition back to center. Foot distance should stay generally the same. Transition to the other side. Take your rear hand, put it next to your rear hip. Drive into the ground to try to drive that hip into the ground to make our spine as vertical as possible. Your spine will not be super vertical. In the beginning, people will have a big C-shaped spine and their shoulders will not be level. The goal is to figure out how to get level shoulders and then to sit further and further back towards this lead leg hip. It will take time, that's fine. You can get a little bit better every day by just doing a smooth transition with the aid of your hands every day for one to two minutes at the beginning and at the end of a workout. If it feels like your hip is being ripped apart, that's very normal. Most people have a lot of discomfort in their hip when they learn this position. That is your body working to release tension and it will take time. Let's add our hydro core to this equation. Take the valve, point it away from you, lie it down on the ground. Pick up the bag by the rope handle, the L of your hand, will hold on to the rope. Two thumbs towards the sky. Get it up any way you want to our front rack position. We want the valve to be pointed towards the sky so it's not dragging over our arm all the time. It's not a big deal, it's just generally uncomfortable and annoying when you're focusing on how much your hip is already annoying you. Thumbs point towards the sky, lift your chest up towards the sky, elbows touch the knees. Lift chest up, elbow towards knees, lift chest up, elbow towards knees. That's just to prime our brain to get you into the elbow up position, which is generally annoying just by itself. Transition to our shin box. Sit your hip back into the ground, verticalize your spine as hard as you can. Bend your elbows, straighten your elbows, bend your elbows, straighten your elbows, bend your elbows, straighten your elbows, transition to the other side. Feet stay shin distance apart. Transition to the other side, sit in the hip, bend, straighten, bend, straighten, bend, and straighten. Transition to the other side, pull out the pulsing of the arms, and just transition from side to side. The point of the hydro core is that it's going to force us to verticalize our spine and it's gonna add load to the front of our body. Anytime we add load to the front of our body, whether it be kettlebells, 
barbells, dumbbells, or mace, we are going to change the way our core fires. And that's going to help us get better at relaxing the hip. If you're very, very tight, start with a very, very light weight. The hydro core can be used empty. The hydro core can be used with five pounds water. It can be used with 40 pounds water. So it can be a progressive system. The point of the hydro core in this exercise is to encourage us to have a more vertical spine as we do this transition so that the angle of attack and load on our hip changes a little bit every time we do it. This is a simple transition, but it builds into much more complicated movements later. If you play any sport, then this is a good idea. You will recognize this as being a very, very good idea if you do any type of combat sport. But restoring this natural range of human movement to any sport will help. You don't even have to play a sport, just for daily life. This will help your hips move the way that they're supposed to move so that your core can work the way it's supposed to work so you can be out of pain. If you're a wrestler, or a BJJ guy, take the weight up towards that 40 pound limit because you're gonna be in this position loaded in your sport anyway. But just for anybody who sits for long periods of time, which is almost everybody in the modern world, this is a very, very good idea. Start slow on your transition. Do it as a time under tension exercise. Arms up in front. Focus on trying to lift the arms up, thumbs point towards the sky, and verticalize the spine as much as possible. Focus on the mobility, make it slow, the weight can help.